So um, this is a short video about the Emma stove uh, on the first impressions and the installation experience. Um, I'm here uh, in the yurt. Um, first day that the yurt is up was Stevie, the yurt maker. Can you tell me who you are, where you're from, what you do? Um, uh, I'm Stevie, and I make these these yurts. For a living, I have been doing it for the past twelve years or so. Um, so this year, I don't know which number it is, but it may be hundred and something years we've made. But yeah, but it's interesting now because this combination of this yurt and this rocket stove, which is something new. Um, normally, we use just normal stoves, okay, cast you, iron How stoves. do people find you, by the way? Um, um, on Facebook, on our webpage, yurtopiece.com. I'm sitting there and finish. Yurta.com. Yurta, uh, yurta J-U-R-T-T-A. Yurta yeah. Yurta .com. Yeah. Okay. Yep. So Yurta is like Finnish, Finnish for yurt. Mm -hmm. So how do you when you when you think like yesterday we were very enthusiastic we put up the yurt here um, and put the flue in and installed the the chimney the stovepipe um, and yeah immediately went to get a bag of wood um, had to fire her up um, so what what did you think when you first saw the Emma I think uh, it's um, it's really interesting design I think my um, immediate thought is like some kind of steam train kind of idea I think it's because of the wheels it looks really kind of like steam powered but then yeah as soon as as soon as it was lit you understand why it's called a rocket stove because the the sound mm. you know it gives off it's quite interesting and but it was interesting last night the the amount of control you have on everything. So feeding from the bottom or feeding from the top. And of course from the top you can put really long long wood in. It's really convenient. I think that's kind of my favorite. Well, I don't know if it's my favorite part, but I mean, there's like a couple of things that I personally like um, or that impress me. And I think that, you know, basically you don't have to do woodwork because like this kind of wood, you know, that's like yeah. when people do this cleaning cutting where they just uh, thin out their, their forest or clear along the roads or uh, at the electricity lines. They just leave this stuff laying there. It will just dry in the sun over the summer easily because it's so thin. Yeah, and just any old wood that you can find on the forest floor and you don't need to cut it to size. It can just be really long and, yeah. So... Like me now, now moving into the yurt, like kind of a new part of my life, like the most concerned was being in Finland, uh, living in a yurt. Uh, we have temperatures that can go down to minus 35 sometimes. Um, we had two years ago or three years ago, a Feb uh, January was the average temperature of minus 24. Mm -hmm. um, I have no experience of how it is to live in a yurt, how to heat a yurt this size with a stove this size. Like, I'm, I have the feeling that like, yeah, I think I'll be fine mm. after the what we did last night. I mean, we were having the crown open of the yurt and still like 12 degrees outside. It was it was really warm in here. Mm. So do, I, I, do you think I, I'll be fine? I think you'll be fine. And I was really impressed because the, that was the one thing we noticed when, if you imagine fire going... And then this, this part becomes really, really nice and hot. But then ultimately, the chimney part didn't heat up so much. It was warm, but it didn't get hot, hot. So it, it shows, and also the water in here, it warmed up, but it didn't start boiling. So you can get an idea of the efficiency of the stove, because all the heat was in here, as opposed to going out the chimney. Mm -hmm. So it's like... Um, this is just like a big battery, you know, radiating heat everywhere. And especially if you put this kind of heat fan on here, so then you can 
also blow the heat yeah. horizontally. So then, because that's one considering, because your space is so big and tall that, of course, heat rises and it'll be up there. But if using a heat, a heat fan, you can blow the heat and have it moving around, which I think would be quite good. But it'll be interesting to see what it's like in the winter time because now we're going into summer. So yeah. It's a kind of different uh, scenario, but it will be interesting to see. But I think when the floor is insulated, of course, the yurt is insulated, then when everything's closed up, mm. I think it'll be nice and warm yeah. in here. Yeah. And of course, the, the whole thing is, is it won't stay warm unless you've got a fire going. But this, the controls in this is really nice that you can shut everything down so you have a minimum amount of air coming in and then it'll keep in. You know, the fire will keep in for mm. quite a long time and then, then you can, you know, open it up again and then it'll go... <laughs> Uh, but I'm really impressed. And it'll be interesting to see, also with stoves, is how it um, after it's been used, it'll, mm, you know, what it looks yeah. like. Because now it's quite tidy, all black and everything. Mm. But will it stay like that? Mm -hmm. That's one question. Yeah. But it looks it's really solid, solid little structure. I like the light, like. You know, when we were, we were sitting there, it was dark. Like we had these these two eyes here, and there was a bit of reflection here on this on this metal. And um, when we had this one open, you had like a, a shine up here going to the to the roof of the yurt, and the flames like the light playing, flickering. So you have like really the fire atmosphere somehow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, um, can, you, can, you can see the fire as opposed to it being all enclosed. And the other thing with this water tank which are normally used in, in sauna, but that is also another heat source because when the water heats up, that'll stay warm. Yeah, it's like a battery. So it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's um, a good combination. Yeah. Like, like here's um, on this stove, there's like these screws here, <laughs> which I actually made that you can, you can add stuff. You can add a ring here that you can, you know, have your cooking utensils hanging here yeah, or, yeah. Yeah. or maybe, um, well, I was thinking like to make a kind of a basket around here, um, where, which you can fill up with stones as mm. a as a thermal mass to yeah. to store some heat. Also, it's possible to have stone foundation, which could also warm up. Yeah, but it, I mean, it doesn't radiate much heat to Down the bottom. The, like the burning yeah. chamber doesn't. I mean, like I was once having an experiment. I was running a stove for like I don't know a couple of probably an hour by then. And there was still like snow laying here. Okay. So, yeah. Hmm. Okay, I'm gonna quit this video now, and uh, I say once again, thank you, Claudius. Um, the Emma uh, has been impressing already. Yeah, with with not much experience yet. Um, okay, I will. The idea is that um, I collect some data on the Emma. Um, and share some exp impressions, um, like see what is the outside temperature, inside temperature, um, get an idea how much wood we use uh, to heat the space here. Yep. So that's it. Thank you.